day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. There's the cost, and a lot of people try to avoid the cost of sin. But sin does cost something. Scripture said that the way to sin is death. But my point is that when we do something, we need to understand the cost. Consider the cost of anything that you do. If you sit there and you meet up with a stranger and you have sex with that stranger, the next thing you know, something goes wrong. And somebody sit there and claim that something happened, it didn't happen. But because you put yourself in that position, knowing that you should know who you're dealing with, know who you 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 operated with, but the consequences there. So with most cases, I'm talking about in life, whether you save or not save, I'm just telling you, in life, there's opposition out there that tries to contradict what you know you should do. Here it is. Every time I tell you, surely you shall not die. Come on. That's what happens in life. If you don't get that, look at it. Use these scriptures as, as, as examples in the past to be able to apply it in your life. When somebody comes up and offered proposition to do something that you know the consequences, if you get caught, happens. What some people try to do and say, you're not going to get caught. Well, that's a bunch of people that is in jail or dead now because they did get caught. And what's going to make your situation different from somebody else? Think, keep that in mind. If you sit there and talk about, hey, let's, that crack ain't going to hurt you. <laughs> well, it has hurt other people. Why is it not going to hurt you? Why is it not going to hurt me? Think about it. I'm just saying is these are common sense approach in life. And using this, you see, when somebody contradicts and tells you, that even if you do this, this act is wrong, you're not, it's not going to be any consequences. You need to recognize and say, you're telling a lie. You're telling a lie. It's better for you to sit there and say the percentages that you, you, you had a 30% chance of getting caught. And then you need to tell them, say, okay, just understand that 30%, it's 100% that I won't get caught if I don't do it. But it's a 30% chance that I would get caught and didn't pay the price of it. And that 30% is just too risky for my life. 100%, if I don't do it, I won't get caught. 30%, if I do do it, I may get caught. That 30%, most people are in jail or dead now because that 30% became reality. And therefore you gotta watch out for that. And when people try to get you engaged in things, that can cause you to, to, to fall. But that's what exactly what this uses the Genesis as a, an example of what happens in life. Don't sit there and say, oh, this only happened to Eve. No, you can sit there. The only reason you can look at the situation, if you read this and say, well, you know, I, I'm not like Eve. Well, any situation that comes up in your life today and somebody comes and tells you to do something that you know can have a cost to it, that's when you sit there and say, I'm in an Eve situation and I need to make sure I don't do the thing that Eve did. I need to be able to sit there and say, nope, they, 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 it's, it's against the law. I've been warned about these type of things. And if you want to keep getting involved with that, that's your choice, that's your, that's, you can take that, but I'm not. So, so you need to just cut it off at that point and tell, tell the person go on about the business. So when is that people contradicts the the consequences or lie about the consequences you need to cut them off because they do not have your interest in mind they just probably want to use you as a tool to help get what they're trying to get so and then verse five this is what happens when we sit there and listen to another source that she said he's gonna sit there and say for god does know in the day that you eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good is e good and evil. And if, if, you, if you look at, the, if you read the scripture of Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 28, we were, they were already created in the image of God. 
So to sit there and say to be as God, you already created in the image of God. He's trying to tell, he's trying to give you an op, a, a, a proposition of something that you already are. And that's another thing. When when enemy comes in your life, then they already know that you meet the criteria of success. But they're gonna sit there and try to tell you, well, if you do this, then you'll be successful. And you gotta say, nope, I'm not going with that. I already know I'm, I, I, I am successful. Here, she could have said, I already, hey, look, God, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm already created in the image of God. Huh? I'm already created in the image of God. And the fact that you're telling me to offer to know good and evil, I don't wanna know evil. <laughs> Think about it. I mean, that, why, why I need it? You, he should have told him, you know, they should have this conversation. Why do I need to know evil? I need to focus on good, but why I need to know that? Because you know what? Once I know that, now there's something that I depress me. You know, the evil part depresses me if I got to know it. And that's what did. she was in a position where she's not knowing evil, not doing things that are evil. And now all of a sudden he's giving her to say, hey, that's a great thing to know, good and evil. Think about what the enemy offers you when they try to give these uh, propositions of doing something wrong. And then, then, then the verse six, and, and when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired, and that's that word we're talking about anatomy of faith, desire is a key, that's the image that he gives you a, picture of something to make one wise, she took other fruit thereof and did eat and gave it to her husband with her and he did eat. And now the eyes were both open as if they weren't open before, but all of a sudden now it's open. But now it's open to see good and evil. And they knew they was naked. And they sowed fig trees, leaves together, and made aprons uh, for themselves. And when it was in Genesis chapter uh, two, uh, it said that they were naked but not ashamed. But all of a sudden now they got this image that they should be ashamed. Guess what? Now they start doing things. And then we know the rest of the story. They said they'd hear from God. So I, that's one of the things I'm telling you, the enemy tries to get you off focus. And you know what? He put in a new image in your mind. And, and now that image caused you not to be successful. And you know, one of the things is, uh, that was a wrap up from that last, last, last we covered in uh, part B. I, I do want to get this before I cut this off. Uh, go to John, Chapter five, starting in verse five, we're going to be five through nine. And, and what I want you to do is now that now that mankind now have the, uh, the ability to have good images or evil images in their mind, when we go into the part about dealing with healing, look how quickly, and when we read the scripture, how we are more conditioned to focus and allow the image of evil or bad things to be the predominant factor into why we can't get the good image that we want in our life. It's look at this. It says in John 5, 5, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie, and knew they had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, look at this, look what he said, will thou be made whole? The image, do you want a whole image in your life that, that creates the walking, being healed, being successful, living your life abundantly? Will thou be made whole? God is talking to you now. Will thou be made whole? Look, respond according to God's will. He's asking you, will thou be made whole? And this is what the man said. Look at the man in verse seven. And the impotent man answered him. The question was, will thou be made whole? Look at the answer that the man gives him. Sir, I have no man 
when the water is troubled to mit, to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step is down before me. Now, listen, and in, in, in the anatomy of faith and in the desire, did he just, did he express his desire or did he express his oppositions to his desire? And, 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 and do we get stuck on why somebody uh, drop off from school? Why somebody starts uh, robbing a bank? Why somebody just, just give up a life? When we, we give up why, we focus on the why. And you know what, when we talk about we focus on the why, that means we're not focused on our desire, we're focused on a negative desire. And the negative desire points toward death, points toward defeat. God is trying to tell you that the just should live by faith, expectations are good, that when someone asks you, will thou be made whole, you're saying is my expectation and should be, yes, I, my, that's the image I have in my mind, that's the outcome I want to have in my life. But we sit there, some people, I'm not saying everybody, but we sit there, people, some people, and they look at the reason why they can't be whole. They look at a reason why they can't have the image of success because now they want to sit there and say, look what happened to you in my life. Look what somebody did to me in the past. Holding on to the past, reliving the past. Talking about the fact that, oh, because of racism. Oh, because of uh, they don't like me. Oh, because there's forming weapons against me. Life, you, your part is not to focus on, that's why you said walk by faith, not by sight. It means don't walk and look at the situation that keeps you from being successful. Look at the, the, the what needs to make you successful, what needs to make you whole. Come on now. So look at this. So, so he gave the reason why he can't. Look how Jesus said. Look what Jesus said in verse 8. Jesus said unto him, rise. Take up that bed and walk. I don't care about the reasons why you can't walk. I told you, I asked you, did you want to be made whole? I understand your condition. I can see your condition. I can see why you can't get in that water. But I'm sitting there coming to tell you, I came to give life, life more abundantly. I'm asking you well, what, what image you want. And because you don't know how to give the right answer, I'm going to just go ahead and just tell you, take up your bed and walk. Rise, take up your bed and walk. Go about your business. You've been there for 38 years. It ain't time for you to worry about why you can't be whole. And I'm trying to tell you, you can be whole. Listen to my voice. Listen to the source coming from me, the source of God that says, rise, get up and walk. Huh? That's what God is trying to tell us. Imply this word in my life. What does the word say about you? What does the word say about me? Let's go with the word. The word says I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Huh? The word of God is telling us who we are. We're kings, priests, all priesthood. We do all things to Christ. Huh? He said he came to give us life more abundant. Let's go ahead and take on the abundant life. You, whether you believe or not, recognize that this is the gift of God, period. And, and that's why the enemy trying to take you off focus and start getting you to look at the situation. And you, I mean, look at the fact is that when they sit there and offer junk to you, and then when the consequence and the cause comes up, they're not even around. You ever notice that people who get you in trouble have a tendency not to be around after you get in trouble? There's people in jail now of falling behind other people, and those people don't even visit them, don't write to them, don't even care about them. They call, they're going there and mess somebody else's life up. And that's why you got to watch out what's coming to your life and start focusing on things that God wants you to do. And, and look at the verse 9. When you just listen and just respond to what God tells you, what God says about you, who you are, look what happens. In verse 9, and immediately, not next week, not a few months from now, a few years ago, it said immediately the man was made whole. He took up his bed 
and walked on the same day there was a Sabbath. And only reason that comment came up because some when people start seeing a walk with a, a mat, obviously, they call a bed. Somebody was sitting there said, Why are you walking on a Sabbath day? That you don't be working, you don't be carrying your bed. They focus on the fact is that that that, that legalist legalism comes in, opposed to the fact is, hey man, I've been I haven't been able to walk for 38 years. And the man told me to get up and walk. <laughs> I'm, I'm walking. I don't care about the fact you're telling me that I'm supposed to not be walking or carrying this bed. This is the condition I was in. This represents what I was. And now I'm whole. And that's how the Bible is talking about for our life too. Rise up and be who God says you are. You are a king's kid. You are not a loser. You are a winner. I don't care if the world, you don't listen what the world tells you. You don't listen what people tell you. You don't let the world identify who you are. Let the word of God tell who you are. And if you're not a believer, then you need to be able to tell yourself who you are. But I guarantee you, if you sit there and have faith in God, God's word tells you who you are. Every last one of us. There's other people that tell you, there's people that sit and say, oh, you, you, you're not saying, that ain't what the word tells me. That's not what the word tells me. Well, I'm looking at how your life is and I'm telling, it, it doesn't matter what you look at. I walk by faith, not by sight. I don't need you to look at what the circumstances are about me. You need to understand who I say I am. And you need to know that who I say I am is what he says I am. And what he says I am, that's who I am, amen? Hey, I hope you enjoyed this study. Man, I hope you get something out of it. I'm telling you, you are more than conquered to Christ Jesus. Hey, I'll see you next time. This is part C. <laughs> make it plain, huh? Make it plain. And not only make it plain for yourself, share it with somebody else. And let them get understanding. We are what the word says, what God's word says about who we are. And that makes a big difference. Amen. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we probably cut it up in half, but that's okay. I just hope you got the meaning and the gist behind it and the anatomy of faith. God bless you, and I'll check you next time.